it's theirs, and the Bible will prove it. And I say these words in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Got a lot of pages here, but no notes. <laughs> these are all scriptures. So please forgive me if I fall on my face today, but I know the Holy Spirit will not let me do that. You know, when I was growing up as a young man, I said, what am I going to be when I grow up? Am I going to have a million dollars? Am I going to have a Cadillac? Am I going to be a great job? Am I going to be the president? And then I realized what I wanted to be, a believer in Yeshua HaMashiach. He died for me on that cross. He shed his blood for me, and he absolved me of all my sins. And for that, I couldn't be happier. You know, I was going to start this message out saying, Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. And Humpty is nicknamed the United States of America, just in case you didn't know. But before I get into that, I want to talk about, and I, I don't mean this to be a testimonial, but it, it happened with me. Uh, my first uh, slide, Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the Son and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Which is essentially what I just said. He is, he's given me everything, and I couldn't be, be more blessed. But let me tell you, that early beginning, huh, it was absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I, I go to church, and I hear them, you know, I'm a believer now. And then they say, but, you know, Gary, we're supposed to preach the word to people. Fear went through my body. Do I have to preach the word to people? Oh, I'm not going to do that. That's not me. I, I, I'm a believer. I love the Lord. Well, then you have to say his word. No, 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 no. This, this is not going to happen. And I went to a crazy church that uh, really never mentioned the cross, ever. And it was after a year that I was going to that church that said, well, it's all at the cross. And I, I said, what's the cross? Really? I didn't know what the cross was. That's how good a Christian I was. And, uh, and then I started hearing them uh, in, in, in the, uh, the sermons. For example, Ephesians 6, 18, 20. Praying always with prayer and supplication in the spirit, watching thereunto all perseverance and supplication of the saints. And for me, that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. For which I am an ambassador in bonds, and therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Hmm, I have to speak boldly. Oh, my goodness. And then Romans 1.16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. I mean, I'm getting convicted here, boy. And, uh, I, you know, I'm still, still a little hesitant I don't know what to do. I, I hear these things, and I know they're right, but something, something is pressuring me inside. Uh, do I have to reveal that I'm a Christian? Do I have to reveal that I'm a believer? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, then I read Ezekiel, the Old Testament. Boy, I got convicted more in the Old Testament than the New Testament. Ezekiel 3.18, when I say unto the wicked, they shall surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood, I will require it, my hand. Oh, boy. And then, 
just to go on, if, if that wasn't enough, if I don't say it, who will? Because the word in Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So if it goes silent, no one is saved, and the whole world goes to hell. I don't want to, and I'm not, and I, boy, if I went to heaven and, and, and not done anything, I can see God every day, crunk, crunk, you dummy. You were supposed to preach the word. You were supposed to bless people. You were supposed to give them love. You were supposed to show them everything. And you just sat back and watched everything go by. Well, I'll tell you, everything going by is what's happening in a lot of congregations today. And that word has to get out no matter what. And it is on every one of us to get that word out. It is so important. Every one believer that we can save today is a blessing. And even if in your entire lifetime and, and you're trying and all you do is save one person, the Lord will be, you'll be blessed. You never can tell what that one person will do. He may save a million. I think that was in the case of Billy Graham. Uh, somebody told one person, they told Billy Graham, and bang. So you never know. And uh, when you get up there, there'll be a list. And you'll know what you did. And you know what you didn't do. And just remember that through all of this, whatever you do, good, bad, or indifferent, the Lord always loves you. And yes, in this world, there's a lot going on. Uh, I don't know if I interpreted this right, but Isaiah 1, 2 through 4. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. The Lord has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel does not know. My people do not consider. A sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors, that have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel into anger. They have gone away backwards. Sound a little like today? How many times does history have to repeat itself for man and woman to know where their belief should be? Do you, they they want to live in a secular world all their life and feed on the, the temptation of the devil? Or do they want to know the Lord? Well, in many cases, they will never know the Lord unless we tell them. So it, again, it is so much on us that we tell them. And I'm probably going to end up with another 15-minute sermon so you can leave quickly. But Darren is my friend and pastor on Sundays, and he uh, loves the Lord with all his heart. And this is his family, and I'm very pleased to have you here. Uh, where was I? Uh, I mean, just to take a look at a few things. Our nation right now, the security, the defense, everything in our nation is run by Muslims. And I mean everything. The, uh, the president's top advisor is a Muslim. Hillary Clinton's advisor is a Muslim. Uh, who, what's that thing that uh, Secretary of Defense? Every, I, I, I can go on and on. They're all, you know. And, and then Obama in his book says, if it came down to it, I'd side with the Muslims. And I don't have anything against the Muslims. In fact, I love them. I love them as I love you and any brother and sister. But we have to can take control. It's almost wrong. Everything that was once right is now wrong. I'm, the Bible is number six on the list of do not read books now. It incites to riot. It's just absolutely crazy. Now, I, there, there are more subtle things than what is blatantly out there today. The, there's a subtleness with political correctness in this world. Now, I, I have a brochure on the back that I typed up. It's an article that I read. 
in uh, Prophecy News Watch. I'm going to briefly summarize it, but it w and I cannot even explain it in the way that it was explained in that, so that's why I suggest you read it. But uh, Joseph Backholm from the Fala Family Policy Institute recently went to the University of Washington campus. And he uh, went to talk about transgender bathrooms. And what did the students think of transgender bathrooms? Oh, they're, they're great. And then the next thing he said was, uh, I'm a woman. You have any problem with me? If you feel you're a woman, go for it. Go for it. You know, that's the right thing to do. And he kept on going and going. He finally says, I'm a six foot five, he's five nine and fat. I'm a six foot five Chinese woman. Do you have a problem with that? And almost all said, if that's what you think you are, so be it. So be it. I don't, I'm not going to go out of my way to tell you you're wrong. Well, let me tell you, that's what's wrong with the world today. They're wrong. What happened to the love and the truth of the Bible? The Bible speaks to truth. Society has abandoned the primacy of love given through truth-telling. We would rather lie to somebody than, than upset them. And this goes very deep, really deep. How are the, how the, the kids being raised today? And I, I, re I read today an another thing. Uh, in, this, in this country, those under 30, the millennials, I think, whatever they call them, 50% uh, are socialists. Th they believe socialism is the, way, is the way, capitalism is out, and it's growing. So, uh, it's, I, I don't want to go any, any more in this. I'm going to go to my next. Uh, uh, it's just too depressing. <laughs> Corinthians 5, 18 to 21. And all things are of God, who reconciled himself by himself, by Yeshua HaMashiach, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing trespasses unto them, and hath committed us into the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Yeshua, as through God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he had made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made righteous by the God in him. So, we are the voice of the Lord, because if we are not, no one else is. And uh, even David in the Old Testament, Psalm 49 through 10, I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. Lo, I have not refrained from my lips, O Lord, thou knowest. I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed my loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. And we can't conceal it either. It's, I mean, from, from a time in my life that I step back, I just can't wait. I, I wear my t-shirts. I have everything that says Yeshua on it or something in relation to God. People that come and contact me know that I'm a believer. I try to show it every way that I can. And there's a right way and a wrong way to do these things. And it's very important that we do it the right way. Peter 1, 3, 15 says, But sanctify the Lord in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. That's the right way. We have to use gentleness and respect. You know, I have a daughter-in-law. 
Her name is Shanty. And uh, one day this mean man over here sitting here said, you know, she's looking at you. She watches every move you make. You're a Christian. And my life changed from that moment. I was sort of a vile mouth guy who teased people, who bugged them. I made her feel fat. I told her this. I told her that. And then all of a sudden, I understood. I have to show her love. I have to show her respect. Because if I don't, and I can't be a living ambassador and a living example that she could see Christ through me, then I haven't done anything. Whether I preach or not, it, it's no good. There has to be love with it. And love has to be genuine and honest. If, if uh, a gay person came in here, and I don't know if there are and aren't, but it's no different. I'm not going to preach any different. I'm not going to love any different. Whoever we come in contact to, we should be consistent and show that love to everyone. Because that is what it's all about. God is love. And if we show love, we can't do no any more. With Shani, uh, all of a sudden I had a daughter-in-law. We went to Boston last year. We played pinball. Uh, we had fun. We ate out. We dined. I eat over their house now. And I have a loving daughter who I go out to lunch with. And it's... it's <laughs> It shows, and she understands. She may not be a believer, but now she sees an example of what a, a believer is. And I hope in time that she will come to know the Lord as I do. But if I don't behave like a Christian, she'll never know. Galatians I, 5, 22 and 23 goes into a little bit more. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there's no law. I mean, it's laid out for us here. We have a, a path that we can follow. And, and I beseech all of you to follow this path, to make the world a better place. It is, this is just a temporary place for us, remember. We have an eternal life with the Lord. And I'd like to see when I'm up with the Lord, every seat full, everyone there. And that can only be done through our love and the word of, the God, of our Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach. I, this is terrible. But anyway, uh, I wanted to close with uh, another another. Uh, scripture reading from Romans 8, 35 through 39. And I really think this really sums up everything that I was saying today. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? It is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are counted for as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in our Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach. And, and I'm not the only one that says this. I mean, just take a look at Paul. Paul went from city to city to city, and he preached. I can't remember the towns that he was in, but he got stoned. He got beaten. In fact, one time, he was literally beaten to death. But God brought him back. And what did he go out and do the next day? He preached. So I, I can't say anything more. Uh, I hope you appreciated my message today. Thank you. And uh, Ronnie, would you like to do the Via Hafta or shall I? Ronic Benediction. No, Ronic Benediction.
Would you like to? Then go right ahead. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and to his son, saying, This is the way you should bless the children of Israel. Say to them, they assemble the shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So I shall put my name on the children of Israel and they shall bless you in Yeshua's name. Amen. Shabbat Shalom.
Tranquilo. 